Man, it is hot out here. I mean, there is a pool of lava flowing in from the southwest right into south central Texas. What? Wait, just, just in. There's something going on with Shaw Foreman Garage. Are we going to send you there? We're going to send you there. Program already in progress. Something about a CX-5. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no. And that is pretty much all I got to say about that. Hey guys. Welcome. We're just uh, diagnosing this um, open circuit here and uh, I'll catch you up on uh, what we're doing. Uh, looks like we just got through checking this four wheel drive solenoid, this connector right here. And let's go to the drawing board and I'll show you what we got to check out. Okay, what we're looking at here is uh, we have this code set, this uh, P1887 colon 13 and it is for this uh, open circuit uh, as detected in all-wheel drive solenoid solenoid circuit is open and uh, we've uh, started to go through this uh, flow chart already and the first thing we did is we need to inspect the solenoid to see if uh, there's any kind of malfunction and we need to go to the inspection of the solenoid and this right here is a solenoid inspection and basically it's pretty easy we're going to ohm out that uh, harness right there and we already ohmed it out and it shows that you should have a resistance of 2.2 to 2.7 ohms um, at 68 degrees fahrenheit 68 degrees fahrenheit seriously are you serious this is south central texas i don't think we could get 68 degrees fahrenheit in my refrigerator right now it's so hot out here it is ridiculous i mean i'm serious it's ridiculous it's ridiculously hot 27 2.7 ohms is what we got so uh, we do what we can at the temperature that we're at and we got 2.7 ohm 2.7 ohms is good so was uh was it good you know did you have uh you know any problems any malfunction no so let's go to the next step and here's a wiring schematic right there so what we're going to do is uh we're, we need to see if there's an open circuit um, let me find uh where is the actual wiring schematic let me see why am i not prepared here we are okay it's this circuit right here it's all-wheel drive solenoid and we're going to go to the all-wheel drive control module and we're going to check these circuits right here and we can see that there's a couple different connectors in between them and now if i can find my flow chart again so we are going to disconnect the all-wheel drive control module and disconnect the coupling we already have the coupling disconnected and we're going to expect inspect for a continuity between terminal o and the um all-wheel drive solenoid terminal a so that is going to be this right here o and is a light green wire all the way down to a so we're going to check that out if that checks out fine then what they're going to have us do is check for continuity to ground and there shouldn't be continuity, so we wouldn't have a short to ground. So we're checking for our open circuit. We're gonna check for uh, short circuit to ground. If that turns out good, then we gotta be checking. Yeah, okay, so then we're gonna go and check uh, terminal P to uh, on, at the all-wheel drive control module and then uh, terminal uh, B of the solenoid, which is gonna be this circuit right here. So let's go uh, check all that and see what we find. Okay, so this is the all-wheel drive control module right here. And I've already taken the liberty of pulling these panels off, uh, which aren't really hard to get out. Uh, Y'all have seen me do that before. And just to show you where we are, we're on the passenger side front kick panel. 
Um, and I'm gonna disconnect this connector right here. Come on. Okay. And here is a diagram. This is uh, the connector we're looking at right here. And we're looking at O, which is that top one on the left. So I don't know if you can read that with this camera, but it's a light grain terminal right here on the top left. And if we look back here, we're looking for the light grain on the top. There it is right there. It's Cause we're pretty much looking at the connector from the back. That's, that's what that's showing, the connector from the back. So we need to go into this right here. And I am going to use this pin. This is for micro pins. It's a very small. And this little thing right here is a lifesaver. I'll tell you that. I've used it so much. It's, it's old, but um, it works. It goes right in there. So I'm going to get it right. So if we can do this with one hand without messing it up. Right in there, just like that. And we're going to be uh, checking the continuity in this circuit from here all the way down, way down in there. So I need to get these cables and I need to get them hooked up. I need, I'm going to have to hook up a couple of my test leads together because my test leads just, they're just not long enough. So what I'm going to do is hook this one right here like that. I'm going to let it kind of sit down. Take this lead right here and I am going to hook it to the back of this lead. If I can get that in there. Just like that. Set this thing on the ground. I'm going to pull this so sitting like this because I need to kind of close this door. I can't lift this thing up with this door open. It will do damage. So and close the door like that and let this lead sit here and then I'm going to bring the lift up bring the lift up and get under there and I'll show you what we're hooking up to okay here I got my voltmeter hooked up and I got it hooked up to this wire that's going up into that doorway right there I have this other lead right here so I can check it. I'm going to turn this on. So we're checking continuity, checking ohms. And where are we? This wire right here is what we're looking for. We're looking for the, the green wire, which is on this side. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to check that and uh, we'll see if I can get this lead up in here. I'm just going to touch it if it lets me. The lead's getting caught on something. I'm going to touch it right there. And there we have, we're showing 1.9 ohms right there. And that is continuity. They're not saying that it has to be a certain amount of continuity. Of course, you want it to be good, you know, 1.9 ohms. It's not that good, but it is continuity. And of course, um, I was just barely touching the thing with this. And, um, you know, I, I haven't in, taken into account, you know, uh, how much um, um, resistance is in uh, my leads. And I got double leads hooked up, but uh, good continuity. We're checking for a short or open circuit. That's definitely not an open circuit. So um, let's uh, move on to the next thing. So uh, the next thing is to check it for uh, short to ground. And anything here, I mean, the, the exhaust is grounded. You know, the uh, rear differential, that's grounded. Um, I could poke this thing into this. You know, maybe that bolt there, all that's ground. And I, I'm actually not getting anything when I touch this on any of these spots and I'm moving it to different spots. I'm not getting anything at all. So that's good. We don't have a short to ground. So 
now uh, we're going to go check the other lead um, so let me move all this stuff out of the way get the vehicle back down and we're going to switch to the other lead on the all-wheel drive control module and see if there's an open circuit in that circuit there's two circuits two circuits going to this uh, solenoid and um, according to the, to the code, um, uh, we have an open circuit, so it's got to be in one of them. This one wasn't it. Let's check and see if the other one is. So I'll do that right now. Okay, we are back in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out. I'm going to leave my leads onto it. And <clears throat> what we're looking for is the brown wire, which is right next to it. It's P. It's a brown wire right there. And that's the one that's right underneath underneath it. So there's green wire and then you see the brown wire underneath. So when I flip this over, it's gonna be the one on top. So see if we can go into this one right there. Okay, you got it. Carefully lie that down. Close the door, but not all the way. And then, okay, I get this thing back up. Let's check the other one. Okay, we're back underneath here. I got my lead hooked up. And I got the other lead here. And we are going to the next one. So the next one is the brown one. That is the one right next to it. So can see that it's the one on the left that we're gonna try to get to so let's see if I can do this with one hand get this up in there and I just want to touch it just like I did the other side touch that in there and I am not getting anything. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, hang on. Let me see if I can stick this in there. Okay, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I have that stuck in there. Now, this is my back probing pin, so it's very small, and it is just barely stuck into the end of this bigger connector, so I'm not worried about you know opening up a pin tension or anything like that, so I just needed to mention that. I have it in there, and I have nothing i got out of limits so that basically means it's an open circuit so let's let's go back to the wiring schematic and see uh if we can find that other connector where another connector is so we can get closer to the all-wheel drive uh, control module all right this is what we are looking for so we have an open circuit in here somewhere we're checking it from here to here and what we we checked it from here and was we have an open circuit so we're going to go to the next connector over the easier one to get to it's a c40 and this is actually on the rear axle area and i know exactly where it is so uh, we're looking for the brown wire it's brown going all the way through um, that goes this direction and uh, as you can see this little arrow that's pointing down that little arrow right there that means that this side of the connector is the male pin this side is the female pin so if you didn't know exactly which where this went it would say it was buried or something you weren't exactly sure which direction you're looking at you would know by looking at this little arrow right here that what we want to do is we want to check the male pin the brown wire male pin of this c40 connector so that's what we're going to find that's what we're going to check so let's check that right now okay this is the connector that we're talking about so let's see if i can pull this out and inside there are the male pins and i doubt you can see that maybe you can there's male pins inside there and these are the female pins so these are the ones we want to check the one that's going off not this one this is going back that direction it's going towards the solenoid we want to check it on this side uh, so we're going all the way from 
up there all the way back down to our uh, meter I'm gonna pull this out and we're going to I'm just gonna take this off this lead so I can just stick this big thing in there and I just need to touch the brown wire and I just drop my lead so there's the brown wire right there is that second one it's the middle one on this side should be fairly easy pick my lead back up and it's getting caught on everything and I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna touch it and it's pretty easy to touch and I'm getting nothing I still have an open circuit here okay so with all that being said you know the next step would be to go to go to the next connector and the next connector we have to take this entire you know we need to get inside the uh the rear trunk of this thing and start taking uh panels off and everything to get to the next connector but if you're observant enough and i'm not talking about you guys because i didn't show this to you yet um, but uh, as a technician uh, you need to observe just everything that you see you know and this is uh, something that I found right here and you see this wire right here it looks like it's kind of mingled okay and I can look up in there and I can see I don't know if you can see but there is some shiny wire so that means that this connector is kind of messed up you know and and there's some some wire showing so if i take this and plug my little lead thing back in here if i can do it with one hand plug this in this is my uh, back probing pin and i'm gonna stick it in there i'm gonna try and just touch that wire right there and sure enough we got continuity if I can hold it on there I'm trying to hold it into place there right there we got continuity so we didn't have continuity over here at this connector but we got continuity a little bit further back so right there that's your open circuit and uh, honestly this vehicle came in and it came from a body shop and um, it um, supposedly the thing that's it's been wrecked you know they, they said it was wrecked 70 mile an hour hit you know and they didn't say front and back but you can see there's a lot of new parts on the back there I don't I've seen I had a friend of mine they had a, a CX-5 his wife had a CX-5 and she was hit from behind at 70 miles an hour and that rear bumper was almost in the rear seat and the car was total she was perfectly fine she was all right you know no problems at all she walked away the car didn't though <laughs> and uh, they, they totaled the vehicle and then she went out and she bought a CX-9 you know I think it's a good choice um, but anyway that's that's got to be a connector so i'm going to go ahead and open that up and uh and check it out and see uh see what we find in there let's check it out okay i got this thing uh cut open here so you can see the wire that brown wire right there is completely open and some of these other wires you know they were all the entire harness was hit so these kind of need to be repaired too but this brown wire that's the open circuit that we're having and that's causing the issue with the um, the all-wheel drive system uh, solenoid open circuit that's it and it's because this was wrecked back here everything supposedly um, I could tell it's got an entirely new exhaust system this uh, cross member back here doesn't look new to me um a lot of this plastic all this this all does look new um 70 mile an hour hit maybe it was hit while going 70 i don't know but uh, it's definitely um not um um uh hit at 70 i, I don't know anyway uh i'm sorry about the wind if the wind's uh coming in 
Um, it's definitely not a nice cool breeze. <laughs> no, that's hot, hot oven air coming off the, the lava pool known as uh, South Central Texas. So, uh, look right here, here's the temperature in the shop. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad, 105 degrees at 26%, 25% humidity. Uh, what a day. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, uh, that wiring repair on there. Um, you all have seen me do wiring repairs on this channel before, um, you know, rat chewings and stuff like that. Um, if you haven't seen that video, uh, I'll put a link right up here and, and go check it out. You know, there's a lot of a lot of rat chewing wires that uh, we did a repair on that uh, CX-5. Um, but uh, yeah, let me uh, do this wiring repair. I'm going to um, um, solder the connections and um, put some uh, heat shrink in there and just uh, make it like brand new. And uh, and then we'll we'll see if it fixes. It's gonna fix it. It's gonna fix it. But uh, we'll check it out. Okay guys, um, I got it repaired. Uh, can't even tell. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just uh, soldered uh, the wires together, um, put heat shrink on them, pulled the conduit that I'd pulled off back into place and then uh, put uh, electrical tape around there. So I believe that's how it's supposed to look. Uh, I got this connector connected back up. I got that connector for the solenoid way up in there. I got that connected back up. Uh, so I'm not sure if I show, had shown you what, what it was doing, but you know, on the cluster, as soon as you started it up, it uh, said there was kind of a four wheel drive, all wheel drive error and uh, stuff like that. And uh, this, uh, without even clearing codes, let's uh, start it up and see, see if that's still there. Uh, we need to clear the codes anyway, but let's just check it out. Okay, let's uh, start it up. I got um, everything down there in the corner. You probably can't see the all-wheel drive um, control module. I got that plugged in. I still need to put that trim back together. But let's start this thing up and see if it still shows that there's a uh, all-wheel drive malfunction. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up. Service pass due, yeah, we can't do anything. Oh, look, a vehicle system malfunction. So service pass due, they didn't come in for that. The body shop brought the vehicle here. So I don't see the message saying that there was an all wheel drive um, failure or anything like that, which was coming up before. It's just this vehicle system malfunction. So, I mean, it could have something else going on. Um, it did have two codes. I'm trying to remember what the codes were now. It did have two codes. It had a code in the PCM, but there's no check engine light on. Uh, and it definitely had the code for that all wheel drive uh, open circuit and all wheel drive solenoid. Um, but the, the, oh my God, the, the code in the PCM had to do with the same thing, that there was a uh, malfunction with the all-wheel drive system. So they were kind of uh, together, you know. Um, so let me get this thing. I got to hook up MDARS and uh, see if um, we can clear the code and see if that goes away. So let's do that right now. All right. Um, here we got the MDARS system uh, hooked up and um, in, these ones that you see in blue right here, uh, and we haven't showed this on the channel before, um, the, like that's for the amplifier. And it basically is saying that the module didn't respond. Usually if it's uh, something that's uh, not included in the package in this, it'll show up as blue. It's like it does not have that. Um, so uh, just to let you know. Um, yeah, so, well, the blue says no communication or not equipped. But we do have uh, the 4x4 and PCM. And uh, the, so it's still there. You know, it still has the codes. Uh, different oil temperature, short. Oh, okay, so it's going to set some other codes because uh, I had um, turned the key on and I had uh, different connections. Uh, unplugged and stuff like that. So um, we can't really trust any of this. 
So, uh, and let's just see what the PCM says. Uh, exhaust flow uh, control valve. It did come from the, ex uh, the body shop and they did some work on it. So who knows what they'd put that entire uh, exhaust um, um, cat back you know whatever exhaust on there so uh, no telling you know what they may have done so um, instead of going by this what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and clear these codes uh, so I'm gonna hit that little sweep it under the carpet um, icon and yes I want to sweep it under the carpet we don't want to see it again and uh, let's see what this does so it's cleared them let's go to next it's going to check to see, uh, I'm just gonna check them again and see if we got any codes popping up after we've uh, cleared the codes. So, come on, let's get them codes out of there. What's taking so long? Just spindle round and round. Seriously? Okay, so it's checking the codes after we've cleared the code and uh, of course now we got green lights all the way across uh, I'm going to come in here and, oops, and of course that didn't fix our past service due thing then turn the key off and start it back up kind of felt like the battery was a little bit low okay vehicle system malfunction so there is something else going on here Vehicle system malfunction. So I'm going to turn that off, turn the key back on, and come back over here and see if it said any codes. I'm gonna hit that re little recycle button right there. Let it check and see if there are any other codes. There could it could have some other issues because um, you know it was wrecked 70 miles an hour. You know, um, so let's see what else it may come up with um, shouldn't be that uh, that four-wheel drive uh, system um, at least not that solenoid because we just fixed that open circuit <sighs> come on what is it okay so it's going back to PCM I want to check that and exhaust flow control valve uh, position circuit low usually a low uh, circuit low it usually means uh, a short to ground not always but you know um, just uh, kind of a rule of thumb so uh, you know high voltage or circuit high is usually open circuit circuit low um, or low circuit uh, is usually a short to ground so um, that's a whole thing put the thing back on the lift you know it's a good thing I'm too lazy to take the thing off the lift and instead I've just run pull the MDARs over here on my lift <laughs> so um, put it back on the lift and I'll check that exhaust flow uh, control valve and see if it's um, I don't know maybe uh, it's got a bad connection there maybe you know that wiring harness is bad so uh, let me put it up and check it out okay I got the thing up on the lift let's check it out uh, this entire exhaust looks brand new you know going all the way back as a matter of fact it's got still has this uh paper and stuff and that's the way you know they like to do it let's just put a bunch of paper you know on the stuff that gets really hot so it can catch on fire you know and th so this entire exhaust including of course this muffler if it was hit from behind it's all brand new this here's the um the valve in question and this looks like a whole new harness and it's going up underneath there so we may have to pull this off to check it out but looking at this right here you see that this thing was loose it wasn't plugged in all the way and it looks fine it's brand new so let's plug that in all the way well, let's see. Let's uh, clear the codes and see if that comes back. And if it does, then we're going to have to get into here and probably check it out. Um, first, uh, before doing that, we'll probably check the flowchart and see what the flowchart says. Um, and 
that would probably be easier. At least we can find out. Are we looking at open circuit, short circuit? What are we looking at? But first, let's, you know, let's clear the code and see. That could have fixed it. That thing loose, it just wasn't plugged in. So let's get it down and uh, clear the code and see what happens. Okay, I got the thing plugged in right here. I got the key on. Uh, got MDARs hooked up. I am going to sweep it under the carpet again. Hey, yes, I want to sweep it under the carpet. So, just to verify, I mean, this might not do anything. Uh, so, it went ahead and cleared the code. Let's check it again. It's probably going to say the code's all coast is clear. Then we'll have to start it up and then see if it happens again. Um, so, sometimes, and I don't know if this is going to make any sense, if I can even explain it properly. Uh, some PCMs uh, inside the PCM, if it's uh, if it, there's a circuit sending out a particular voltage, you just just say like five volts, and uh, there's like a small um, what you would call like a a voltmeter hooked up to that one circuit, and it's checking to make sure that it has five volts going in, and if that uh, circuit is shorted to ground then that circuit will go low and it'll set a code for low voltage you know um, it may be setting a five volt signal out and um, maybe it's uh, expecting a uh, it to use a certain amount of voltage so maybe it's looking for like two and a half volts or something like that and if it goes to zero then it, it figures that um, something's drawing it down too much, it's low voltage. If it goes up back up to five volts, then it says it's a high voltage. So that determines on if it's gonna set a code of low voltage or high voltage. Now that's one way. Another way is it's sending a uh, voltage out, it's going through a circuit and it's coming back. And, it's, and instead of the little voltmeter checking the voltage going out, it checks the voltage coming in. And it could be showing a low voltage when you have an open circuit because it's not getting any voltage back. So um, th just that, that kind of rule of thumb, low voltage is uh, short to ground, high voltage is open circuit. And uh, that's, uh, you gotta kind of take that with a grain of salt. It all depends on how the system looks at it, you know. But uh, anyway, and in this case, you know, that uh, connector being open, you know, uh, not connected properly, if that's the, you know, what's causing it, you know, that's definitely not a short to ground. That's definitely an open circuit. Okay, so I got everything cleared here. Let's get in here and turn the key off. Start it up. Service pass due. Service is still past due. Service is still past due, but I don't see any other faults. So that that was it. That thing was just unplugged. Uh, but the body shop did that. You know, I, it wasn't me. <laughs> but um, okay, <laughs> um, that's the way it goes. Sometimes you just got to make sure that you know when you plug the stuff in, it, it clicks and it's plugged in. Um, but I mean, we've all been there and we've all done that <laughs> for sure. Um, okay. I just wanted this to be a short video. Uh, you know, I got a Mazda, you know, and it's got an issue, you know, and I think it was just kind of cool to show, you know, how, uh, we can, uh, search for a, uh, open circuit. And, uh, this one was fairly easy, you know, thank God it was an easy one because it was just right there on the, on the back, you know, and. And you could see that, uh, you know, where it had been hit, and that just happened to be right, you know, where it was having an issue. Um, so, um, you know, of course, it could have been worse. We it could have been something that happened on the inside, and we would be in the back here, you know, pulling all kinds of trim out and stuff, and looking for that. And God, that that's you know, that can be a nightmare, especially in this you know heat. You know, I mean. Look at this very hot weather, right? They got flames right there, you know? I mean, does it, your computer say very hot weather on it? Um, yeah, it's nice and hot. <laughs> As always, thanks, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't, man, what are you waiting for?
hit the button, subscribe. You know, it, it doesn't cost you anything, it's free. You know, and hit that bell, that way you get notified. Um, I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you, and I will see you in the next one.